All right, today you're gonna need your sketchbook. You're gonna need some markers. Water-based markers would be great. They do not have to be poster markers. You're gonna need a paintbrush, eraser, pencil, and a Sharpie marker. You could also use a thin Sharpie if you have one. You could even use an ink pen if you wanted to. The first step, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your pencil and you're going to draw different types of lines. And I'm gonna press kind of hard so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna make a line that goes across the page. Then I'm going to thicken up that line by doing the exact same line right next to it. But our goal is to actually make lines go under lines, around lines, and now I'm gonna make one go from the left to the right, and I'm gonna curve it. I don't want it to be just straight across. I'm gonna make it go under, and then so your first line can be kind of your guideline, and then I'll make the second one. You notice that I'm kind of using my pencil on its side a little bit, and my lines are kind of thin. They don't have to be thin. And mine are kind of scratchy looking too. I'm gonna come up here and go from here down to here. And I'm going to make a curvy or wavy looking line. And I'm actually gonna take this one and then make it look like it's going around it like that. So let's see if I can make that work. Thicken it up. You're probably getting the idea of how I'm doing that. Draw light until you get it right. Now I'm gonna make this one go around it and go under it. And so this part right here, I'm going to erase, you guessed it. And then I'm gonna have it come back up, go back under, and I'll have this line to come back. So it didn't go from top to bottom, it actually went from here to the middle of the page and then looped around. And then I'm going to show you how to make that look more 3D or make it look like it's really overlapping in just a minute. I'll show you how I did that. Now I'm going to do another idea. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to loop it around. And if the looping's a little bit too hard for you, then just don't do it. I'm gonna make this one kind of just go off the edge over here. Now you can do this project. Now I went a little too fat right there. So I'm actually going to erase and erase because I make mistakes too. And you can see my lines are just about that wide, not very wide, less than an inch. Now I'm gonna show you how to make it look like it's actually overlapping. You can take the end of your eraser on your pencil. It's probably a little bit easier. And all I have to do on this one is to erase that. Now it looks like it's going around this line. This one over here, I'm gonna go this direction. And now it looks like it's looping around that line. And then I will do the same thing here. Awesome. And now we need to do something, I think I'm gonna make this one curve down from the right. And then I'm gonna make this one kind of spiral. So I'm gonna take this spiral, make it go under just a little bit. And then I can show you how to finish that up. You're gonna continue this line and go right next to it. And it's gonna be a little bit confusing, but then you can see how it ends. I'm gonna shape this line up a little bit. That's why we draw a light till we get it right. Get all my eraser off of there. Curve line. And then I'm gonna make this one. It's okay if your lines go off the page of your sketchbook. Don't worry about that. That's kind of a, I think a cool effect that it all doesn't fit on the page. This looks a little bit blank up here, so I'm actually gonna do one that's gonna go under, come over, 
thicken it up. And then I'm actually gonna have it come back on here and go under and over. So it's gonna go under the first one, but it's gonna go over the second one. So what do I do? Do I erase these two or do I erase these two? It's gonna be these two because it's gonna go over. If I erase the other two, it would mean it would go under. And I even erased a little bit more because I wanna make sure the line looks pretty parallel. All right, so the next step is to trace it. So now we're going to trace it with a Sharpie. The next step is on some of the lines, you don't have to do it on all of them, but on some of the lines, I want you to create lines inside of the lines. It's also gonna make it much easier for you to realize what's in the foreground, what's in the front, which will be the tubes, and then what's in the back. And you notice I'm using a curved line to give this, looks like a pipe or something, to give it some depth to make it look 3D. And I would recommend probably, I mean, you could do the same thing on all of them. Uh, I would recommend that you do something where you have a variety of lines. I don't think it'd be bad, like I could do it again over here. Maybe I'll do it in a different direction. It does provide a little bit of unity to do that. And then if you look at some of the examples that I'm gonna provide on this video, you can see what they did. Uh, you could just do just different types of lines, um, squiggle lines. Let's say on this one, I do some type of scallop like that. And it's totally up to you what you wanna do. Just remember, whatever you do in your pencil, you wanna do it big enough because a Sharpie marker, its tip is a lot thicker. So you wanna make sure that you draw big enough for that. And then I'm gonna start going a little bit upside down, mess with my brain a little bit. And I'm gonna go and do this all the way around this tube. All right, I'm gonna finish up the rest of them and I'm gonna speed it up. For the next step, you're going to take your water-based markers, and if you have these poster markers that I gave you, it opens on its side. There's instantly a color in here that I'm not too crazy about, and I'm not going to be using brown. Uh, if you have different types of water-based markers like Crayola markers, you can use those as well. They work great. And what you're going to do is this has like a chisel on the end, this kind of flat area. You want to kind of take it and you're not going to color the whole area. That's the cool thing is you don't have to do a ton of coloring. And I'm even going to do kind of the edge up here. You're just going to kind of do a little bit of tracing. It gives you kind of a nice border around the edge. Try your best to stay off your tubes or your lines. And it is easy, I just did it right there, didn't mean to. Try your best to stay off of them. And I want you to do kind of a thick line. 
just like that. And then I'll show you later on what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna do one more, and then I will spare you from watching me do this really slow. And you can see this time, because this is a little bit more tight, I'm actually gonna use the tip of the marker. And if you have smaller markers, you might wanna use those. And you do see it does sometimes kind of color it completely in. There's nothing you can do about that, and that's fine. If you see the end result of what I'm gonna do with just plain old water and a paintbrush, and you would rather just color the whole thing in, be my guest. You could color the whole thing in. But I'm gonna go and tell you, you might just wanna try this on one spot, give it a go and see if you like it. You also kinda of have to let it dry too, cause when it dries, it does really cool stuff. And the fourth graders um, have done a project similar to this and they did it with uh, a landscape. All right, so I'm going to finish the rest of it up and let's speed it up. All right, for the next step, all you're gonna do is you're gonna use some water some paint brushes, and uh, it looks like I have the same type of paintbrush. So two different sizes if you have them, if you only have the one that's in your art kit. One thing I do probably recommend is, I probably would recommend ripping this out. Um, I'm not actually going to on this one, but if you have the chance and you can have a parent help you, I think it's probably a good idea to rip it out. Make sure that you've scanned your artwork to make sure you haven't missed any spots. You can see I have one little spot right here that doesn't connect. Try to get all those lines that don't connect. And it's super easy to um, miss a spot. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your paintbrush and I also have some paper towels so I can wipe my paintbrush off. And you're gonna blend. And I'm gonna start with this blue. I only have water on my brush. I'm touching the ink from the marker and I'm just rubbing it and you can see that it's pulling that ink and I'm gonna just start to blend it. Don't put too much paint on your brush and I'm gonna blend that and it basically makes paint. Get a little bit more water, doesn't take a ton. And I'm gonna rub an area. You can see how it's really starting to activate. It's kind of neat because it gives you kind of like a different shade or tint of that blue color. And if I put quite a bit of water on my brush, then I'm gonna get a really light blue. And if that's what you want, then you can get a really dark value on the edge. And what I wanna kinda of do is kinda of smooth it out where you can't see those hard lines. And then when it dries, it doesn't seem like it's doing a whole lot, but when it dries, that color will just pop. And if you wanna leave some of your white, you can do that too. Do these small areas, kind of blend those in. Those you're not gonna have much of a choice, but you're gonna see some different value in those too. Go back over. Another reason why I recommend taking it out of your sketchbook is your paper is gonna start to curl a little bit. Even if it's thick paper like this sketchbook paper, it's still gonna curl. There's no way around that. And then I'm gonna kind of blend that in kind of starts to bleed. Do this one too. And then I'm gonna finish all these blue ones up. I might leave some white to get a little pop on there. And after you start to do it, you're gonna realize, you know, how hard you press. And if you stay in the same spot a long time, you keep scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, it, you'll start to see little bitty fur balls like you do sometimes on your clothes. And you can see I'm gonna take my paintbrush, wipe it off a little bit, and finish this last blue. And then I'm gonna show you what you have to do next. 
before you move on. And you can, ooh, this is some really nice. Get on those edges. And then I'm gonna get just water and just try to get this really diluted water down. I might even take my paper towel and dab it because I kind of like a little bit of white to show up. I don't want it to be totally light blue. Now the next step is, especially if you go into another color like yellow or something like that, you'll really need to wash out your brush and you of course don't have to have a big old can of water like me, but just make sure the next time you go into a new color that you have really thoroughly washed your brush out. All right, so I'm going to continue and I'm gonna speed up the video.